Hello, it's Lucy, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be talking about how to prepare for the Grace Hopper celebration. Last year I attended in 2022, and I walked away with four different offers from Dropbox, Intuit, Goldman Sachs, and JP Morgan. I also later received an offer from Amazon, and I interviewed with a variety of companies, including Adobe and Atlassian. If you're curious about how all of that went down, you can check out my vlog from last year. I will link it in the description below. Let's talk about what you should be doing right now. So it's about a month before the conference and you should have received an email to either log in or create an account on the Grace Hopper portal. Now, a lot of people refer to it as the Grace Hopper portal. However, I think it's formally known as the Anita B Career Center. So you need to go and create an account or log in. And then this is the most important part I tell everyone you need to do is upload your resume. This is extremely crucial for companies to be able to find you. Um, I uploaded my resume a couple weeks ago and I've already been getting emails coming into my inbox asking for me to apply to their full-time positions, um, getting RSVPs to private events at the Grace Hopper celebration. This is super, super important because this is a great way for recruiters and companies to find you without you putting in any additional work. So one viewer asks, there are two options this year for the resume database. You can upload your resume or build a resume. Which one is recommended as in what do recruiters prefer to look up on and where will the keywords and all show up? So I don't think either one of these gives a clear advantage, but I wanna say that if you upload your resume, make sure that all of the information is correctly inputted into the fields. So you may know that a lot of times when you upload a resume, there's a resume parser and it grabs different information and then puts it into the sections that it believes it belongs in. If you upload your resume, you want to make sure that it put everything in the correct section so that when recruiters are looking through different people's resumes, including your own, they can easily identify all of your different past experiences, your skills, things like that, so that they can easily identify if you are a good candidate or not. Another thing that I highly recommend that you do is start applying to companies now. Many people will wait until they're actually at the Grace Hopper celebration before they start applying to companies. And this is okay, but many companies will send out coding challenges that need to be completed within the next couple of days or week. And so you wind up doing these coding challenges while you're at the Grace Hopper celebration, probably in your hotel room, and it can be a pretty stressful time. So do yourself a favor and start applying to companies now so that you can complete those coding challenges in the comfort of your home. And then once you're actually at the conference, you can focus on those in-person interviews and landing offers while you're there. So there's a few ways that you can do this. Um, many companies will reach out to you usually via email with their different internship opportunities and full-time opportunities, and you should definitely apply through those links. The reason being is that many of them will be Grace Hopper specific links and many companies will separate their Grace Hopper applications from their normal applications. Um, a lot of times because they will have a specific number of spots open for Grace Hopper applicants. And this oftentimes makes it easier for Grace Hopper applicants to get a job offer. So it's super important to apply through those links. You can also apply through the Anita B Career Center or the Grace Hopper portal. They post a lot of job openings there as well. And those are obviously Grace Hopper specific links as well. So those um, should be your next step. And then if there are no links um, specific to Grace Hopper that you can find, then you can go ahead and apply to their normal job applications. Um, and then but just be on the lookout for any like check boxes that might say like you're attending Grace Hopper, make sure that you check those. That is super important. Um, if you don't see that, that's also totally fine. A lot of times once you're actually at the conference and you're talking to the recruiter, you can mention that you applied online and they can usually pull your application out of the normal apps and put them into the Grace Hopper apps. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you start applying to companies early on. The next thing that I highly recommend that you should be doing is preparing for interviews. So I'll start by talking about the interview process based on my experience attending the Grace Hopper celebration and then how you can prepare for those. So let's start by talking about technical interviews. So these are your algorithms and data structures like arrays, linked lists, trees, graphs, sorting, searching, and dynamic programming. 
Um, I also had some questions on OOP, like classes, objects, encapsulation, inheritance, abstraction. Um, you also have those system design questions asking about how you design a system or component, um, discussing the architecture and interactions of those components. Um, I've also had some code quality uh, tests, like um, how do you review code? What is your coding style like? Are you using best practices? Um, is your code readable? Um, so those are all questions that I've been asked at interviews at Grace Hopper. Um, so now I'll talk about how I recommend you prepare for those. So um, obviously I think for coding challenges, the best thing to do would be to practice for like LeetCode or HackerRank or CodeChef. Any of those websites are really great. Um, personally, last year I did the Blind 75 challenge. I don't think I completely completed it, but I did a lot of those problems. This year I'm trying to do the Neat Code 150. Um, so those are some just some suggestions, but really you should just focus on working on your um, weaknesses when it comes to coding challenges. And then in terms of the other styles of interviews, um, I would suggest just reviewing object-oriented programming, reviewing system design, and reviewing how to write good code. Make sure you know what um, a code review looks like because I think for a lot of people who haven't had industry experience, that's probably um, the one that is the most surprising. So just make sure that you know how to write good code and review good code. Next, on to behavioral interviews. Um, these are your interviews where you'll often be asked about your past work experience and previous projects. Um, they'll oftentimes ask some problem solving questions like how do you handle ambiguity? How do you approach challenges? What is your decision making process? Um, you'll also probably be asked about collaboration and communication. Um, so many interviews will assess like your ability to work in a team. Um, how if you can explain your thought process clearly, and then also any experience in leadership or conflict resolution. Um, these are all very typical questions to be asked. So the best way to prepare for that, I would say um, for work experience, you should have at least one project in mind that you can talk about um, completely, like fully. Um, and what I mean by that is if someone asks you what you did, you can explain exactly what you did. If someone asks, you know, how could you have done it better? You have an idea in mind. If someone asks, um, like, what did you learn the most from it? You can answer that question. Just make sure you really know the project inside and out. Um, for more of the problem solving and communication and collaboration questions, um, I would say, like, you know, just you can look up some basic questions and just have an idea of, like, what you would answer. Um, I personally find it's best to have a certain story in mind so that um, when you're asked that question, you know exactly what story to tell. Um, and then, you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, you can follow the STAR method. Um, you know, just kind of you want to make sure that you present the problem, um, how you solved it, and then like what you learned from it. Um, so as long as you can do those things, the behavioral interviews, um, I think, are the least intimidating. Now let's talk about how you can succeed once you're actually at the Grace Hopper celebration. So once you're there, you'll notice that there's an expo hall, and this is where the companies will set up their booths and they'll have recruiters waiting to talk to participants, but also time, a lot of times have a lot of swag. Um, and these booths will have very long lines. So I usually like to get up early in the morning to get a head start. Um, so once it's your turn to talk to a recruiter, you can introduce yourself and um, tell them whether you're interested in internships or full-time opportunities. So for me, I would say, hi, my name is Lucy. I'm a senior studying computer science at Northwestern University, and I'm interested in full-time opportunities. Usually then the recruiter will take the lead and say, oh, we have these full-time opportunities available. What exactly are you interested in? And then you can kind of continue the conversation on from there. These conversations are typically very casual, but if you did do research on the company ahead of time, it's nice to mention those here and there to show you're interested in the company. And then most times recruiters will point you in a direction of where you can apply it to um, their applications. Um, if a recruiter really likes you, a lot of times they can refer you. Um, so this means that you might get automatically sent a coding challenge or moved on to the next round to interview. Um, so this is a really great opportunity to do so. You want to make sure that you impress the recruiter, but also keep it casual because, you know, they're people too. 
Um, so yeah, make sure that you definitely take advantage of the expo hall. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that if you have an offer already waiting for you and there's a deadline on when you need to accept that offer, you should definitely tell the recruiter. Not only does this look good because it means you've already got an offer from another company, but it's really important for them to know your timeline because maybe they um, can you know, expedite the interview process so that you can get a decision earlier, or maybe it's just not possible to expedite and then you don't want to waste your time applying to this company if you can't um, finish their interview process in your timeline. So um, yeah, make sure that you mention any competing offers that you have. Now let's talk about how you can stand out. I get asked this question a lot and I think it's understandable because there's hundreds of thousands of applicants and you know, how can you stand out from the crowd? So I think um, the biggest thing would be just to show interest. Um, you know, you are already at a great advantage that you're there in person talking to the recruiters and the other engineers, but show interest in their company um, and actually pay attention to the conversation you're having. You know, don't just like nod along and half listen to the conversation, like really put your full focus and energy towards that conversation because I think it really shows um, another thing is it's, you know, it's very obvious if you're just there for the swag. So, you know, swag is an awesome benefit of being able to attend the Grace Hopper celebration. But if you're there to get a job, um, you don't want recruiters and engineers to get the wrong impression and think you're only there to get the swag. Um, so make sure you're actually, you know, caring about the conversations you're having. Um, you can try to do research ahead of time on the companies that you're really interested in. I don't think this is a requirement, but it can help. Um, and then just show up looking professional. Um, I don't think, you know, most people do not show up in like blazers and a suit, but if you just dress nice, um, look presentable, I think that also really helps as well. Those are all my tips on how to prepare for the Grace Hopper celebration. I wish you all the best of luck in your interview process, and I hope you all have fun. I will be attending the Grace Hopper celebration 2023, so if you happen to see me there, don't be afraid to say hi. I'd love to meet all of you. Um, and yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!